It's going to be a busy episode today. We've got our Champions League group to show you. We've got a game to play. We've got transfer deadline day and we'll do a squad kind of overview, a kind of review of who we have in the squad ready for this last season of the Kelly Boys. It's going to be hopefully very exciting. Lots to show you, lots to talk about. Let's get right into it. Yes, hello, welcome around to Living in Sports, here for the Kelly Boys on Football Manager 21. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button for more daily Football Manager content. And if you missed the last episode, go and have a look at it. It was a, it was a pretty good one, I would say. Go and have a check. We started off our new season, our final season here, with Kilmarnock in this Football Manager 21 series. I know it's been a long, long time, hundreds of episodes, We're literally in the hundreds, so, uh, so yeah, if you if you have missed any of them, go and have a look. Especially the last one, you'll see how we started off this season. As you can see from right above me, though, our Champions League group has been drawn. And this year, we have been drawn with the giants that are Galatasaray and Zenit. Also, Liverpool as well. It could be very, very exciting. But looking at the teams that are in there, I fancy our chances to get in the top two and progress through to the next round of the Champions League. The first time we'd have ever got to the knockout stage in the Champions League. Not bad way to finish the series, I don't think, should we get there. So yeah, I say we play Liverpool, Galatasaray and Zenit. And we'll show you some of those episodes, those games, in future episodes. But you don't get to see that today. Today, we're playing Motherwell, just as exciting. We've got Transfer Deadline Day coming up as well. And I'll do a weekend review of the squad. I was asked to do that. And uh, I've done a few more episodes since then. I've kind of forgot about it. So we're going to do it today at the end of the transfer window, just in case there's any more ins or outs. But there may or may not be some transfers to talk about as well. We'll see if uh, if anything happens. We have made a couple of signings uh, since we last saw each other. We have signed Isaac here, who has the number three, even though he's a central midfield player, which is slightly annoying for me. But we've signed him from Barcelona. He only played a handful of games from Barcelona as a central midfielder and attacking midfielder, possibly as a replacement for Lukic, but can also play, as you say, on the right-hand side or in central midfield as well. So I think we're still going to play with the three centre mids and he can play as a kind of uh, ad advanced playmaker uh, in that system or deep line playmaker. We can play in either of them, really. Um, another addition to the midfield. So we have lots of central midfielders. Don't, don't look at me like that. I know we have lots of central midfielders, but we've got lots of football to play this year. So we'll be having some rotation. It's important to have some. And here's a familiar face. Radovan Lukic. We've signed him back from Rangers. Remember, he played for us oh, a long, long time ago now, 2026 through to 2028. He played 50-odd games for us. He was really, really solid off that right-hand side and in behind the striker. Well, he went to Rangers. He played fairly well for them. But then, uh, yeah, kind of found himself on the transfer list. So we signed him back for 40 pounds So he can finish... Uh, our career at Kilmarnock with Lukic, who was one of the really good players who was with us when we were we were one of the, the best teams in the country all the way back then, 2026, 20, 27, that sort of era. I like Lukic. I was sad when he went, and I'm glad to have him back. So an old face back in the team. He's got nice first touch, nice free kick taking, good flair, passing. It says he's a two and a half star player, but I think he's a bit better than that. He certainly played a lot better than that when he played for us before. So hopefully we can uh, we can get some of his old form back. And our winning start to the season has continued. Obviously, we beat Rangers 3-1. We've beaten Dundee 4-1. We beat Falkirk in the Betfred Cup second round 1-0 after extra time. That was a bit more tough than it should have been. And the last game, we beat Hibs 3-0. Thanks to goals from Boba Fabricio Fuentes and a penalty from Matteo Di Mau at the end. And this episode, we play Motherwell. And then we've got the transfer deadline day. We never know what's going to happen. But what we do know is going to happen is we're going to play Motherwell. And hopefully, we're going to win that game. I'll see you for that, unless there's some transfer stuff that happens. As you can see from the squad, quite a number of the players are wanted. So hopefully they don't get sold automatically by the board. Um, that would be appreciated. So here we are, ready for the Motherwell game. No transfer news uh, before this game. No one going in or out. So hopefully 
it stays that way for the rest of the window. But here is the team we're going to go with for this game. Garcia, as our, our new starting goalkeeper, obviously gets the game. Perez and Anderson, our partnership over the last year or so at centre-back. Sika on the right and Thompson as our new left-back. Our midfield three, who hopefully you'll get used to this three together. Vlalic in between Stacey and Pedraita. And then the Fuentes at Brothers, even though they're not actually brothers, on the wings for us with Boba up front. Hopefully, another good game here. You can see that Boba's got three goals. Fuentes uh, from the right-hand side. Fabrizio's got two. There's goals from all round. Darren Anderson's already got two goals this season for centre-back. Not bad at all. Hopefully, we score lots of goals in today's game, and it's very exciting for you. Fingers crossed. One interesting thing about this game is the manager of Motherwell is Ryan Christie, who obviously we had in our team a few seasons ago. We then brought him into the, the backroom staff. He got snapped up by Motherwell, and he's now their manager. So hopefully... For him as a manager, he does well, but not against us, ideally. 40 minutes on the clock now, and we've actually not had a highlight in the game. We've had seven shots to their none. I've went attacking, and uh, and we've done absolutely nothing in this game. So this could be quite boring if something doesn't happen in this second half for us. We are going to uh, fire up the entire team, and hopefully, as I say, we'll actually get a highlight in this game. That'd be nice. Finally, the first highlight of the game, 64 minutes in, and we've given the ball straight to Motherwell here. Reed to come forward, back to Price. Can we get this ball back and maybe break away? Let's see. Porteus with it into Price and Sacco. And back to Porteus. We're putting pressure on the ball here. This could, could force a mistake. Instead, it's a lovely through ball to Leonard, and what a save from Garcia. The first time he really had to be called upon in this game. And he made a fantastic save. Leonard swings in the corner. It's cleared by DeMau, who's come on on the left-hand side for us. And we've also brought on George Payne in the middle for Stacey as well. And Fuentes goes down the right-hand side. A good chance from Smith, and it's out for our corner kick. And that is probably going to be the end of the highlight, unless we've got something from this corner. Boba swings it into the front post. Perez heads it. It's a good save from Stewart. And we had no highlights at all. We had two or three chances in that highlight there. And I must say, this, this is a very frustrating game for us. We're not doing well, and we are really not seeing many highlights. DeMau clears it away, but only as far as the Motherwell players, and Sacco has it now. Over to Portis and Price. They're playing nice triangular passes here. Sacco with it again. Back to Portis. Long ball forward. Intercepted by Anderson, who plays the ball back and forth between him and Thompson now, and Pena finds Pedraita. It's over to Perez now, who hopefully switches to play. He does. He finds Fuentes. And he goes down that right-hand side. Sika tried the underlap, but really just got in the way. And the ball's played back towards Stewart and the mother will go, and it's cleared away. But payne has got it now. DeMal now as well. He drives, he hits it. Oh, and it's just wide of the goal. What an effort from DeMal. But there is only, well, 15 minutes to go, and we're not winning this game. We'll bring on Isaac to come in uh, in midfield instead of Pedraita. You'll maybe get to see it if there is a highlight. Is uh, his first attempt to, uh, to, to do something for us. Uh, that you'd get to see. But all in all, this game's been very, very poor for us. And we've reached full time and it was a nil, nil draw. And I thought we were going to run away with the league this year after we, we, we've been playing throughout August so far. But unfortunately, when you guys had to watch it, we certainly weren't running away with anything. That result does still leave us top of the table, even if Celtic do win their game in hand. But uh, yeah, a disappointing result against Motherwell there. We've got one more day to the transfer window close, so we'll let you know if anything happens between now and then. And then after that, we'll give you a week in a squad talk through. And you'll get to see who everyone is, just so you can uh, refresh your memory if you've forgotten who some of them are. Or if you're new to the channel, you'll get to see all the people who we have in our squad. Well, this is worrying. Um, Schalke have made an offer of £39 million, raising, uh, or rising up to £51. And the, uh, the board have accepted it, and I have no option but to allow this or to resign. Yeah, so I'm going to have to accept it. Uh, and it looks as though Daniel Stacey is going to Schalke, which will leave a big hole in our midfield. This, this isn't something I was expecting. He has apparently rejected the contract offer from Schalke. Now, bear in mind he's only on £12,000 a week with us. What on earth was Schalke offering that he was not going to accept that contract? Don't get me wrong, I am... I'm happy about that, but surprised. Let's see uh, Let's see what happens in the next 13 hours of this transfer window. Right, here we go. The offers are coming in thick and fast. Arsenal's offer for Stacey is nowhere near as much as Schalke's. So we will reject that. For some reason, 
uh, hiding in here is an asking price, so we're going to say uh, unspecified, and he's not not available for transfer. Let's confirm that. Uh, let's see what else is happening. Fulham making an offer for Yael Francisco. I'm going to reject that. Sheffield United have made an offer for Edward Lambert. Not enough money. Bear in mind we paid, what, it was 50, 60 million pounds for him. 20 is not going to be enough to get Lambert back off his. And another offer for Stacey there from West Ham. But 11 million pounds is certainly not enough. I don't want him to go, but it might go out my hands at some point. We've got nine and a half hours left here on deadline day. You'll join me as we go through it. Sheffield United have offered nearly £30 million for Lambert. No, perfectly fine. Uh, we will not accept that. And uh, we continue on. There is just 19 minutes to go until the end of transfer deadline day. It looks as if we might have scraped through keeping all of our players. And we have indeed. Thank goodness for that. You can see the largest three transfers in the league uh, were all from us. Us signing a player from Celtic and then Alcatraz being sold to Brighton and Jovic going to Aston Villa. We've brought in 19 players this transfer window. You've not got to see them all because a lot of them are young players who will never get in the team, especially now this is our last season. But we've spent £98 million this window. I imagine over £100 million has been brought in as well from other transfers. So uh, it sounds bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Right, so, to finish off this episode, let's have a little squad overview, a little squad review, something like that, for anyone who's not really been keeping up with who we have, or who's maybe joined the series late and not sure who all these players are. We'll go through each and every one of them in our first team squad. Let's not go into the reserves and young team, there's far too many in there. But in our first team squad, I'll give you a quick 10-15 second run down each player, and let you know who they all are. So we've got three goalkeepers in our squad. The first one here is Maris Francois. We signed him a few seasons ago for just half a million pounds. He was amazing uh, in his first few seasons. Didn't concede a goal in his first season with us and then had uh, 14 clean sheets and 28 games in his last one. Now, a second or third choice though. Our new first choice keeper is Enrique Garcia who just arrived in this transfer window from Nacional in Uruguay. Nine million pounds he brought him in. He looks very, very good indeed. Both those goalkeepers are 21. We've got three young keepers. Ryan Morris is our third goalkeeper. He's actually the club captain because he's been here for quite a long time, for about five, six years now. He uh, came through the Youth Academy. He was first choice keeper uh, in his second, third and fourth year with the club. Kind of became back up to Francois last year and then obviously Garcia's come in. So Morris is probably third choice keeper. Unusual to have your third choice keeper as your captain, but think things are like that. On the right side of the fence, we have Gregorio Luis Sica here. To be honest, he's our only actual right back in the team. He's outstanding, though. Bombs up and down that right-hand side. We brought him in a couple of seasons ago. Now, £10 million from Boca Juniors, and he's been very, very good for us. I say very fast. Gets up and down that line. Good physical stats, good mentals, some very nice technical stats. Decent player. On the left-hand side, we've got Simon Thompson, who we signed in this transfer window from Celtic. He's a left-back and a centre-back, but he's acting as our first-choice left-back at the moment. Another young player. And then we've got lots of young players in the team. Very nice homegrown talent. And he'll be competing with Naul Carrasco, uh, who we signed last season for £5 million from River. Lots of uh, potential there for him. He was competing with Guerrero before we had to sell Guerrero during this summer window last year. Uh, but yeah, nice physical stats, nice medals. Maybe could improve some of his technicals going forward, but yeah, solid player. Meant to say, any of these players who you uh, you want to just pause on, you can and see the stats for them as well. I'm just batting through fairly quickly. Centre-back partnership starts with Sergio Perez, not the Formula 1 driver, but the Uruguayan centre-back. He's 21 years of age, nice, solid stats. They're very good physicals, marking a 17, tackling a 16. Good. Could do with improving his heading as a defender, but he's solid enough. We signed him for £10 million from Nacional two or three seasons ago now. And he partners 20-year-old Darren Anderson. You can see, again, nice physical stats, again, with good tackling and good marking in there. Uh, we signed him a long time ago now for a million pounds from Hamilton back in the 2026-27 season. And he's been a solid part of our centre-back partnership basically ever since he arrived. Yeah, Darren Anderson is our second centre-half. And backups to them include Tedden Menge, uh, who's a, a, actually a real player. He's at Man United just now. He can play centre-back or he can cover it right back. We had him in on loan right at the start of the Kelly Boys, all the way back in the first season as manager. In fact, the first two seasons we had him in on loan. We didn't get him back. He then travelled around a few different clubs. Was at Schalke. We just bought him back for £20 million last year. To be honest, probably not my best signing 
uh, to have a third or fourth choice centre back cost twenty million pounds. But again, he's very good physically and mentally, and he's got some nice uh, marking and, and tackling's all right for him there as a backup centre half. Ted and Menge. Another backup centre half here is Jeff Eisner, the Norwegian 20 year old who signed it for Rosenberg for £6 million last season. Played all right when he has. For some reason, his stats are declining, which is slightly worrying. But I think he's been very solid when he's played for us. He's also scored quite a few goals. He's scored three goals in six games last year. Very good for a centre back. And another option in defence can play right across the three positions. Esteban Rodriguez. We signed him, what, three years ago now for three million from Boca Juniors. Nice, solid player. Nice, good physical, mental stats, good technicals where he needs them as well. Esteban Rodriguez, 20 year old. You can see we've got a very, very young team. David Pospisil is the next man we'll talk about. He can play centre back as well as playing in the midfield as well. You can see he's got some, again, nice physical stats. I like, I like a player who's got good physical stats. He's nice first touch and nice passing, so he's really a playmaker. We signed him from Slava Play for 10 million last year. Really, he's not a first choice player. Kind of backup can cover in midfield or defence. Solid enough for his 19 years of age. More young players. Also in the midfield, someone we're just talking about, lots of offers in for him, Daniel Stacey. Again, nice, well-rounded player, lots of good, important stats where he needs to. He acts as a box-to-box -box midfielder for us. We signed him on a free from Chelsea back in 2028, and he's been a solid fixture in our side ever since. Daniel Stacey normally partners Milos Vlalic in midfield. Vlalic acts as our playmaker. He's a good first touch, good passing. Yeah, his distribution is good. He's a nice, nice player to add to a deep line playmaker. We signed him for four million pounds or four point eight from Partizan Belgrade in twenty twenty eight. So the two of them, Vlalic and Stacey, are gonna come through the team together uh, as our central midfield partnership for the last four years. They're kind of vital to the way we play. And this year, because we've changed the shape slightly from a, a four two three one to a four three three. Uh, Pedro Ita is joining Vlalic and Stacey at midfield. He's acting as an advanced playmaker. Uh, we saw him in a transfer video a few episodes ago. We tried to send him all the way back here when PSG signed him, but we've signed him for a free this year. And he's been all right for us so far. Maybe maybe not as good as I'd hope. And backups to those in the midfield include Dylan Hammond, who we've just signed this year for £10 million from Arsenal. Andrew O'Toole, who we've brought in on loan this season from Man United. Isaac, who we just mentioned at the start of this episode, we brought in for twenty-three million from Barcelona. He looks a very well-rounded player. He might end up playing instead of Pedraita, or maybe we'll change back to four-two-three-one, and he can play at attack in midfield. Blair Lunin, who we signed for what four million pounds from Dundee United a couple of seasons ago, now to add to our kind of Scottish contingent, and they're not developed as much as we'd have liked. But solid player in the midfield as a backup. Yal Francisco, who I mean, if you just if you've been following the series for a while, we've had Yal Francisco for quite a long time. We signed him in 2026 20, 27 for seven thousand pounds, and he was an integral part of our team of those first two seasons. Then went out on loan for the last few seasons. He's played a couple of games for us. He's coming back. He'll probably play off the bench for us as well, but he can play in midfield and on the left hand side as well. Nice, nice, well rounded player. George Pena, one of the Pena brothers. We sold Eduardo, but but uh, George is still here. We signed him. What, four years ago now for 4.8 million from Cluj. A nice, solid, well-rounded player can cover all the, the midfield positions you need to, mainly as a playmaker, but can play as a box-to-box -box if needed. Ryan Hamill, who's a centre mid and attacking midfielder. We signed it for 5.5 million from Celtic, what, four or five seasons ago now, and he's been... He was our attacking midfield for quite a while, and then Jovic took over, and Hamill was kind of came off the bench for Jovic quite a lot, and now we've changed formation. He, he's not really getting to play for us, but he has nice physicals, Nice mentals. He's good passing and technique, but the rest of his technical stats could maybe do with improving slightly. Probably why I don't like him as much. But at 25 years old, he's got 71 caps for Northern Ireland. It's not bad. In the wide areas, we've got Fabrizio Fuentes, who we've brought in this year to play on the right. He he looks really, really good. I don't know how long we'll have him. Hopefully, he stays the full season, but he might go in January. On the other side, we're playing Abraham Fuentes, who we signed a few seasons ago for free from Cruz Azul. He'd been on loan at Sunderland and Rangers the last two years, and now he's getting a chance on our left-hand side. Not being as good as I'd hope, though, so he might not continue to play there. But yeah, that's the two Fuenteses. Also can play in the wing is young Nicholas Collin, who if this series was progressing any more, I think could be one of the best players for Scotland, possibly in the future. We signed him for £5 million from Rangers a couple of seasons ago now. He's got the chance to develop. He's only just turned 17, uh, or, or yeah, about to turn 18 in the game. He's got good stats to develop if he was playing a bit more, but I don't think don't think he's quite going to develop in enough time to, to really use him this, this season, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Now let's look at the attacking talent. We've got kind of four or five players who can play up front and kind of across the attacking positions. The first one's Alfredo, who have probably not seen a lot of this year, but he is a very, very good player. Can play up front and behind the striker midfield on the wing. Signed for £13.7 million a 
couple of seasons ago. He scored 30 goals in 45 league games, which is not a bad return at all for Alfredo. We've also got Matteo Di Mao, who we signed a couple of years ago from National. You can see we've signed quite a lot of players from South America. I'm sure you can work that out. Nice, well-rounded stats, good technicals as well. Yeah, he's, he's playing off the left or up front. Pretty decent player, Matteo Di Mao. Edward Lambert is another player. He mainly plays on the right-hand side for us, but he did arrive initially as a striker. It's, what, five, six years ago now? He arrived on loan, and then we bought him for £47 million so far. It could be even more, depending on clauses. You can see his average ratings have been really, really good for us. Scored lots of important goals and assists, mainly from the right-hand side. Kind of lo losing his place because of Fabrizio Fuente is now out there, so uh, we'll see how much we get to use him this year. But that's Edward Lambert, been a very good servant to the club. One of the only real players uh, still left in the team, Eddie Nketiah, 32 years of age. We signed him uh, about three, four years ago now for 14 million off of Arsenal. He's been very, very solid. He mainly plays off the left-hand side for us, sometimes up front. But that's Eddie Nketiah. Starting to decline now at 32, but... Uh but yeah, they're still a member of the squad at the moment. And finally, our, our main man up front, at least he, he has been this season and toward the end of last year. His name is not actually Boba, but I can't pronounce it as so we nicknamed him Boba. Very, very nice stats in the, mid, in, the, in the middle of the page. You can see there we signed him for £1.5 million pounds from Red Star Belgrade. Scored nine goals, 11 assists in the league in his first season with his... And then he had eight goals and 12 assists in his uh, second season. So far this season, he's had three goals in four games. Very, very solid well-rounded player. For a striker whose finishing is only nine out of 20, he scores a surprising number of goals. And he, he gets everyone else involved as well. He's a very, very good player. And you'll see a lot of Boba this season. So yes, that's a squad review for anyone who uh, who hadn't seen it before or has maybe wanted to just check up, see how the squad's doing. It's a very big squad, so there'll probably be two different teams we get to see. One will probably play a lot of European games and one will probably play a lot of the, the league games for us. But hey, the big teams in the world do that, don't they? You see your, your Liverpool's, Man City's, Chelsea's, things like that rotate their sides because they've, they've got so many different competitions to play in. And we're going to be like that as well. That actually took a little bit longer to talk through that full team than I thought it would. So if you have enjoyed it, if you have appreciated that, getting ready for the rest of this final season of the Kelly Boys, then please do leave a like on the video. really does help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You know, share it with your pals as well if you think they'd like it as well. This last season, start right here. You get to see the squad and we go through the last 10 episodes-ish. Is that what's going to take to finish the season? Who knows? Depends how far in Europe we get. And uh, yeah, share it with your friends. That's, that's a, that'd be a nice thing to do. Uh, and uh, until the next one, we'll see you then.